Hi friends, welcome to Creative DIY Purpose. This week, I have a few more easy scrap wood projects for you that turn into beautiful home decor. I have a lot to share with you today, so come on, let's get started. Here's a list of materials and tools that I used on each project. Additional supplies will be posted at the beginning of each project so that you can take a screenshot if you'd like. So I still have a few more scrap pieces of that weathered lumber and it is not pressure treated so we're good to craft with it. I cut out this piece that is eight inches long and cut it into looking like a tag and did two smaller ones for future projects. I drilled a hole in the top of the larger one and now I'm going to apply the washer on with the holes lined up using the Gorilla wood glue. I decided once it was on that I wanted to apply a faux rust look. So I am taking a brush and applying one coat of the wood glue. I then applied some antique wax, which you could definitely use brown paint, and then some cinnamon. Now I'm covering it and then applying a thick coat of the wood glue to seal it in. I wanted to keep this tag simple and rustic looking. I got this piece of greenery. I think I ordered it from Walmart. I don't even know what it is. If anyone can identify it. I think it's some type of herb. I like the way it turned out and it's just a simple, quick, easy project. The possibilities are endless on what you can do with even just the smallest scrap of wood. And I wonder if you made up a bunch of these tags blank and sell them like that so that others could craft with them. I wonder if that would work. I believe that this is birch wood. It does have a part of it missing on the side, but we're going to work with it. We're going to turn it into a cutting board this time that's not going to look like a pumpkin. I did mess up a little bit there with the saw. It was kind of hard to make that curved line, but I fixed that with the sander. Kind of learning new things as I go. All right, so we got that all cut out and sanded. I made this design up on Canva. It's one of my favorite Bible verses. I did it as a reverse transfer and printed it on, on freezer paper using an inkjet printer for an easy DIY transfer. And basically it's like making your own ink stamp. Only if you'd like to learn how to do a reverse transfer, I will put that video for you below. I just posted the tutorial on how to do that over on my other channel. I drilled the hole through the top and added some jute twine. I did end up applying a small amount of white wax all over the entire board, and that helped diminish some of the orange tones from the wood. For the next project, I took a seven inch piece of that weathered board, ironing on a DIY transfer onto this little scrap of fabric. And now I'm gonna make a little pocket on this piece of wood. The sunflower image I did get off of canva.com. Apologize, I had videotaped me ironing it on to the fabric and cannot find it for the life of me and my phone. I know I've showed it before in previous videos, but I will definitely make a point to show it again soon. Just cutting out the square right down at the corner so I can get a little bit neater of a look. And I'm applying this fabric on with some Gorilla hot glue. I have a couple of these wood pallets that my husband saved for me, and it has a lot of wire attached on the other side. I'm going to cut off a piece and see if I can bend it and make a hanger for the sunflower pocket. And then if anyone has any idea on, on what I can do with the rest of this, let me know. All right, so we got our piece cut with some wire cutters. I'm going to drill two holes up at the top. I was able to bend the wires with my hand on the back where it will hang. And now I'm using a large pair of pliers to just bend the hooks inward and then switch over to a pair of needle nose pliers to get that nice little loop. I want to make sure that it's turned in and that there's no rough edges. 
So I had a couple of these sunflowers. I think I got them from Walmart last year or the year before. I decided to trim off some of the plastic piece that holds the stem on because when I put it in the pocket, it was pushed out too far and it just didn't look right. And this was another quick and easy project that didn't take any time at all and was created with using only a seven inch piece of scrap wood. Then I just took two pieces of string and tied it around the sunflower. And it's all ready. If you're interested in learning how to create the principles like you've seen in my videos, then I'd like to invite you over to my design channel where I post two Canva tutorials each week. Next project, we'll start with these two pieces of molding. You might have recognized them from last week's video where I made this small one into a little house. This week, we're going to be working on the larger piece and we're going to turn it into a decorative birdhouse. So after a lot of cleaning, sanding, wood glue down the center, and even some whitewash, this piece was ready to take outside. And I used a one inch wood boring bit to make little faux holes for the birdhouse. And this is a wood boring spade bit. So I had to make sure that I didn't drill down too far with the point and go through the other side. I found this dried twig in my stash and that's what we're gonna use for our perch. So I'm gonna use the larger drill bit, drill down, cause I want to ensure that the wood glue will hold it nice and sturdy. I applied a generous amount of wood glue. And I'm tapping the twig and I should have used a hammer, but it worked. Just wiping off the excess glue. And now it's time to let them dry. The next step is to hot glue some Spanish moss on and we'll apply that right above the perch. And then we'll do the same thing for the bottom. One step that I didn't show was nailing and gluing on a small base so our birdhouse stands up. Next, I needed to find a roof. I had some dried bark already on hand. It did take a lot of sanding. This step was actually, took me a long time because I had to sand the underside of the bark so that it would sit flush on top of the birdhouse. Here I am applying wood glue and then I nailed in two paneling nails that I had that were the same color as the bark. You see there, it is very thick bark and this wood was kiln dried, but I still don't take any chances with bugs. I do bake the bark just like I do pine cones. So there is one of the nails and you can't even see it. And I like I'm just trying to show you guys where the other one is. And I, I had to look really close. There it is. So that was a pretty good choice. And it is on there very well. I drilled the holes for the nails. I did put the nails into the bark. This makes the step so much easier. I apply wood glue to both the wood and the underside of the bark. I'm using the Gorilla white glue that dries natural and it doesn't foam up like the original version it's virtually odor free and it holds very very well once that's had a chance to dry i will go out with a sander and even up the edges on the roof This next project was a lot of fun. I had this thrifted 12 inch wooden crate. Now I have this garden steak. It is untreated and you can purchase them at your hardware store. They usually come in large quantities. They did have some major staples in there. Some I were unable to get out. I dug into the wood and it just wasn't worth it. I used a hammer to flatten them so that there wouldn't be any rough edges. I took the steak cut it into four equal pieces. And now I'm going to apply two of them onto the bottom of the crate and the top with glue and nails. 
Before I did that step, I did use my sander to try to take off a little bit of the graying because I liked the look of the natural wood a little bit better. I allowed the glue to dry for a few hours. Then I tied a rope on to one side and I did it diagonally through the middle top portion. And I will show you how I added the bead to it as well to cover up the knot. Let's do the other side together. I twisted the rope to be able to get it in through the small hole on the knob. That's what the original knob looked like, the one on the right. I wanted a softer look, so I took the sander and went over it a few times to get off the finish. And then I applied a very, almost like a dry brush of white wax. Then we take the end of the rope and slip it through the bead. And then I slid the bead down so that we can tie the other end of the rope onto the corner. I did go diagonally. You could also run a rope underneath it and just tie it once under if you didn't like the look. I did a double knot, making sure that it was very tight how I tested this to make sure that it was <laughs> sturdy, I put my foot down on top of the crate and pulled up on the rope so they are nice and sturdy and not going anywhere. I'm taking the end of the rope and twisting it again because now I have to put that piece through the bead as well. And I'm twisting because that just seemed to help it thread through a little bit easier. And then I take the bead down and pull it up over the knot. This will help cover and hide the knot. Next, I clip any end pieces off with the scissors. And now we're ready to see the final project. I, I made this as a plant holder for someone else, but I don't have a plant hook in my home. So I hung it by the door to show you guys. You could hang it on a peg or place it on a table or a bench. And here I hung it on an antique coat rack, but it is so sturdy that it could hold plants, books, and you could even place items on top. Friends, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you'd like more upcycling content, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and I will see you next Sunday for more. Have a super blessed week and God bless.